You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to Dear Culture, the podcast for by and about the culture here on the Griot Black Podcast Network. I'm your host, Panama Jackson, and the year is coming to a close. 2023 has been one for the books for many reasons, but especially for us here, Dear Culture. And part of the reason why it's been one for the books is because we've had so many wonderful guests and people who had so many interesting things to share. Now, you know, if you listen to this podcast, that one of my favorite segments to do here is our Black Fessions. And let me tell you, they never disappoint. Our Black Fessions are, I I sit and talk to people for 30, 45 minutes just so I can get to the Black Fessions because you really never know what you're going to get. So on this episode of Dear Culture, we're going to break down some of our favorite Black Fessions from 2023. So You know, when it comes to TV, movies, music, and books that people are into, it's always fun for our guests to show that black people aren't a monolith, right? So, and that's exactly what happened with comedian W. Kamau Bell. This is a black, I just feel like this, I'm thinking now I'm thinking about uh, uh, one of the first concerts I ever went to was a Tom Petty concert. Okay. Now, well, now I'm going the other way. I'm going like, and and I've been to a great, and I've been when well, my best friend was a Grateful Dead head, so I've been to several Grateful Dead concerts as a as a teenager. Not as a, oh. like now it might be cool for black people to be at a Grateful Dead concert, right? But back then it was not. It They're was selling not. those t shirts at, at Target right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's yeah. the, I'm that's saying, the in the nineties. I'm just trying to get. I'm I'm trying to give you both. I'm trying to give you celebrated Kwanzaa. Went to a Grateful Dead concert, so you can take. We the call black that well rounded. Well rounded. We well rounded. Cause I used to listen to Motley Crue in middle school. I was a Motley Crue dude. Like Motley Crue and Skid yeah. Row and all that. Those are my bands. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, that's funny. Yesterday I saw a black dude wearing a Nirvana T-shirt. And I'm like, you have no idea that I died for you wearing that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how much I suffered so you could walk down Sixth Avenue wearing a Nirvana T-shirt, black man. There you go. I love that. For music executive Whitney Gail Benta and hip hop caucus executive Brittany Bell Surratt. It wasn't what they liked, but what they didn't like that made these black fashions like spectacular. Do you have a black fashion for us? Yes. All right, my black fashion. <laughs> my black fashion is um, I am a West Indian. My my father's side is from Trinidad, Antigua, Saint Kit, uh, and I absolutely hate like soca and reggae music. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, there's New certain songs I know. There's certain there's certain songs I like, but like real talk, if you want to get me off a dance floor, I'd be like, all right, let me go sit down. And I know, and I, and I cringe because I'm like, I know my grandmother's like rolling over in her grave right now. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Ugh, but yeah, I can't, I can't stand it. I got to say thank you for that because that's a real black fashion. That's like cultural and personal. Like that's that's where you come from. And you like, yeah, I just that, you know, that. Thank you. That is a real share. <laughs> that is, I feel like that's a real, a real share. <laughs> hey, what's your music one? Uh, that Lauren Hill should not be considered in the top three of female rappers. Hmm. <laughs> That's a take. That's a take. I uh okay. I I as even as somebody who doesn't love the miseducation of Lauren Hill as much as everybody else does, I think what you just said. That's is a bananas. black fashion for you. That's a that, that's no what fashion. you just said in the twenty fifth anniversary. I'm embarrassed by both of you right now. I, I hope they scrubbed it from the internet. First off. That First off, is a masterpiece. You do not get an opportunity to be more upset at what I said <laughs> than what you said. That that's not a thing. You that was appalling. Just calm down a little bit. No, you gonna have to just fall back a little bit. Both um, of you are because, ridiculous. Listen, right I'm fine with mine. Lauren Hill is. I, 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 uh. Lauren Hill is my favorite verse in hip hop history. These next two black fashions definitely went against popular opinion. Here's rapper and founder of Pendulum Inc. Academy, Mickey Fax. And author Bossy AP. I never like Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That's a black fashion. That is 100% okay, a hundred percent of black fashion. Why? I, I just never got into it. I never. I just could never. It never made sense to me. I, I just. Huh. I just couldn't. I tried. I tried. I just can't. It's not. 
just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all, actually. I love it's, Will Smith. I love all of the actors, right? But it's just, it was never for me. It felt, it felt, it was too much. It felt, it felt like a caricature of the culture. Even though Will Smith is from the culture, it felt, it all, even as a, at a younger age, it felt dramatized. Because when I look at the video, parents just don't understand. And then when I first saw the 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 first intro to the to the move to the move, to the television show, I'm like, oh, this is just an extension of the video. This is gonna be fire. And then it was a sitcom, and it was like, nah, this doesn't feel right. He ain't rapping on here. It's, I just never you, got it. You feel like culturally it just didn't work, or like you you just had an issue with the way that I guess. Now, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to make it bigger than it is, but like the culture is being used to sell a product. No, culturally okay. it worked because clearly okay. people loved it. Right. For me, I couldn't get into it. I Got just it. couldn't. Get, I tried. I tried. I just couldn't. <laughs> Bossy, do you have a black fashion for us? I do, and I'm afraid that this is going to uh, ban me and bar me from ever being invited to Oprah Winfrey's house. Um, I've always wanted to go to her Garden of Eden and pick cabbage with her. Uh, I, I feel like this is, this is, this is, this is the moment that, that that dream ends. I am not a fan of Maya Angelou's poems. Her poetry, I am not a fan. I love her books. I've read all of her books multiple times. I know why the caged bird sings. Like it just, it just did it something to me when I, when I read it for the first time in the fifth grade, it's still one of my favorite books of all time, but her poetry just doesn't do it for me. It, it's, I'm not going to call it what I want to call it. Cause I don't want people mad at me, but it, I just, I just don't like it. I don't like her poetry. Love her. Love her books. Love her that quotes. That must've made this don't movie a thing. Because her poetry was... I didn't realize she'd written all the poetry in this movie. Um, all of them. But maybe... Yeah, That's I didn't love the poetry so in this old. movie. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. I can dig I can dig that. I think it makes sense and it fits right in line with the movie. So as you know, if you pay attention to Dear Culture or anything that I do, I love all things black culture. Like, all things. I love making up rules to things that we do in the name of blackness. I just Whatever that we can do to blacken things up... In the name of culture, I'm all for it. Um, and I especially love classic, classic movies, music, whatever, what, what have you. But not everyone is up on that game. So here's author and commenter Jamila Lemieux and actor Shamik Moore with their black fashions. Do you have a black fashion for us? I do. All right, what you got? I have never seen Jews nor Minister Society. How? I don't... I don't, you know, I told somebody that for the first time last week and I felt like a weight had been lifted off my chest. You know, I think part of it is those movies came out when I was a little girl, you know, and so my mom okay. was not showing me stuff well, like she that, <laughs> you know, and I don't remember them coming on TV terribly often. Um, and so I just somehow never saw them and have yet to have like the impetus to be like, okay, let me go out and watch them and I'm curious about them, but I'm also like, I mean, I saw Boys in the Hood and I was devastated, you know, like Ricky died, like, ugh. Ricky! You know, for years, I, have, I actively avoided movies with death. Like I've never seen Titanic. Why? I know how it's going to end. I've never seen My Girl because people told me that the boy got stunned by being died. You know, like, yes, so Thomas. to watch these. Yes. So, like, to watch these movies where I know a number of people are going to get shot up in front of me. Um, I just haven't run to that. The way that the way that you feel about like Boys in the Hood and seeing Ricky dying and how that hurts, that doesn't happen in Menace of Society because you don't care for the characters the same way. It's pure nihilism. Like it's 100 percent like it's all bad from day one and never gets better. I would just be curious about your perception of Menace of Society watching that, because I have argued with people. I actually put this on Facebook. I think Menace of Society is terrible. Uh -huh. like, I, now, I now have I've gone completely 180 and I think it's actually a bad movie. Uh mm -hmm. 
It's effectively a Tubi movie just made in 1993 before we had all the other options, so we wouldn't know any better. Truth is, I've never listened to Mob Deep. Not yet. Really? You know, I, yeah, okay. I can understand that because, again, if you, you know, if the Wu Tang was like new to you as well, like Mob Deep, that, that's the same chamber right there, you know, to speak in the language of the Wu, right? It's, just, it's the same chamber, that, but okay. I have it. So, do you have any plans to check out Mob Deep? Like the infamous, the, the, uh, the, the infamous album, one of the greatest hip hop albums? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, I think it's just the nature of it, nature of the beast. I, I, I have so much to learn in it. You know, I think I've been caught up in my bubble and doing what I got to do. I, I think I only know about Wu-Tang because it, it got into my bubble, you know, so. Or I only right. appreciate Wu-Tang the way I do because it, it entered my, like, bubble. So, um, yeah, like, I'm not proud of not knowing Mob Deep, you know. Um, I'm just, I know, I, have, I was just asked this question in uh, Atlanta, being Tigger, and uh, you know, I didn't know Mob Deep, so I've heard of Mob Deep, I just don't know, and I probably heard their music before. I just, I just don't know, you know. So, well, let me say this if they ever make a Mob Deep movie, you will be perfect as Havoc, like straight up, like you will <laughs> be the perfect Havoc, like I and I mean that, like from the heart, like that. Gen I genuinely believe that, like 100%. So food is always a popular black fashion. I'll never forget the time that my grill colleague and friend and person that I love dearly, the host of The Blackest Questions, Chrissy Greer, told me that she puts ketchup and mustard in her grits. To this day, that still stands as the most memorable Perhaps I don't want to I don't want to call her food choices disgusting. I don't want to say that about anybody's choices, but let me just say it was off putting, perhaps. Uh, but here are some other food confessions we've heard this year from Grio host Ebony K. Williams, hip hop journalist Jay Smooth and fitness influencer Deja Riley, who is the daughter of R&B legend Teddy Riley. Check out their black fashions. My black fashion is... I don't eat cornbread, oh. which is really not only not only is that weird because I'm black, I'm black and from Louisiana um, and I, I just don't I don't like cornbread. The whole genre of cornbread. Yeah, I knew Claudia was going to say that that sugary shit. At that point, just give me cake. Uh, it is. It is. OK. Yeah. At that point, I'll just take. It. Yeah. OK. All right. Well, no that's judgment. those are black fashions. Yeah, you know, that's tough because being mixed, I feel like when I confess to such things, people don't act surprised. They just say, oh, you know, that's your white jeans coming out, which which may be the case. But um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I'll tell you, I prefer uh, pumpkin pie over sweet potato pie. <laughs> that's one I'll definitely catch flack for. <laughs> oh, wow. That is <laughs> one you're going to catch flack for. I'm going to be the first one to give it to you. Wow. That's just how I feel, man. <laughs> really? It's hard, it's hard for me to think of other ones. But yeah, I, mean, I mentioned up top, I never learned how to play spades. I was just, I was a poker kid. You know, the, pump, the spades thing is becoming very common. And I'm actually surprised that more people, everybody has food ones, right? Food is apparently a thing that black people just love to unload. Like, listen, I don't even like chicken. I'm not saying me. I'm saying people say these things or I don't like mac and cheese. I'm, I'm, I'm learning that a lot of black people don't really care for soul food as much as we think. I don't know if people would be surprised about it, but I do not like Kool-Aid. I absolutely, yeah, no. positively do not. You didn't either. Like, I, I absolutely despise Kool-Aid. And, um, you Did know, you all grow up in Kool-Aid houses? This is an expose. Where yes. there was Kool-Aid yes. available no. growing up in the houses. Maybe not for Jen. She's saying no. I'm saying yes, because my grandma, and I'll say, I'll say half and half. Like if it were, if I was with my mom's side of the family, no, but my dad's side of the family, yes. And you know, my dad was raised in Nick projects. Like, yeah, yes. <laughs> so my grandma, like, and she would take a whole bag of sugar. I watched her do it and take oh, the whole soul. bag of sugar, just pour it all mm -hmm. in to the Kool-Aid. Oh my gosh. Just thinking of it. I'm like, just diabetes. Yeah, I don't let my kids like, drink Kool-Aid for that reason, honestly, because I don't know how to mm -hmm. make it like measuring properly. I just got to pour in my heart and pour with your heart is how you get diabetes. So mm -hmm. I don't want <laughs> to introduce that into my into my family. 
Yeah, yeah. I won't be making Kool-Aid for my kids because I don't like it. Um, I I never even asked my husband if he likes it because we've just never been a, a Kool-Aid household. But like our children will be having that. So that's my my black fashion. <laughs> Fair enough. Like I mentioned, it's crazy how many people don't know how to play spades. A classic black card game. I'm not even sure if white people know how to play spades. I, I have no idea. But when I think of the blackest things out there, spades is one of them. But there are lots of black people who cannot play spades for various reasons. It's a subject of significant debate in the black community. There should be dissertations about this. There should be discussions and forums and panels. We're talking about, you know, politics. But we need to be having spades panels out here because some people just can't play spades. And we don't we need to know why. And little brothers Fonte falls into that category. Do you okay. all have a black fashion to share? Yes, I have a black Absolutely. fashion to share. I have a black fashion to share. I do not know, nor do I care to know, to learn how to play spades. What? You almost made me cuss. You don't know how to play I, spades. I don't care, dog. Yo, so for me, like, I, I don't care. I, like, I just don't. So for me, I, cards have never really been my thing. Um, but, you know, when I would play, I mean, Uno, give me Uno over spades all day. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> If Uno is the supreme card game for me. Um, the thing with spades was that I just remember, like, my family would play, and they'd be at the table playing, and they'd be at the table playing, and, like, I'd be in the living room, or I'd be in the den or whatever watching TV. And, you know, I'd watch, like, two, three episodes of something or, or whatever, watching the Smurfs or whatever the hell. And, like, I would go in the kitchen, and they would still be playing. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, this is the same game? Like, this is... Like, that's not fun to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be, you know what I'm saying, stuck at a table with you people for, like, three hours, like, on one game. Like, that was also my thing for Monopoly, kind of. Like, it was just, this is way too long to the point to even be entertaining. You know what I mean? So, for me, oh, no, man. I just like Uno because Uno was quick. You know what I'm saying? You knew what it was. It's just either you, hey, somebody put that draw four down. Hey, you picking up four. Like, it's it's what it was. Spades just seemed extremely just labor intensive and uh, just, it just does not seem like a gratifying game to me at all. And I have no desire to learn how to play it. And black people, I'm sorry, but fuck that game. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say, bro, I am genuinely surprised that you don't know how to play spades. Uh, I, 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 that, that, you caught me by surprise on that, but you seem like the kind of dude that know how to play spades. Nah, but, but, I, but to be fair, like I said, I'm just not a card player. Like, I remember in the dorm, you know, sometimes the homies would play some tunk, you know what I mean? And tunk was a little too. better because it was, I, I, tunk it was is how you get faster. money for lunch, though. You, you gotta play <laughs> that's tunk how you for get lunch money. money. Right. That's yep. how you get money. So I run a little tunk here and there. That was cool, but, I, I, I'm not really much of like a card player or a gambler in that regard. Well, that's going to do it for this year's Black Fashions Roundup here at Dear Culture. Uh, we had an amazing year with people sharing all manner of things that were interesting, odd, but curious. And, you know, frankly, just further proof that we as black people are not a monolith. And I enjoyed that. I like that. I like that part of our, our culture where. You know, we like to think about things as stereotypically black that we all share these same experiences. And for the most part, we do. But there's nuance in all of it. And that's the that's the joy of black community and black culture. So thank you for checking out this episode on Black Fashions here on Dear Culture. I'm your host, Panama Jackson. Have a black one. started this podcast to talk about not just what black writers write about but how well personally it's on my bucket list to have one of my books banned <laughs> i know that's probably bad but Ooh. i think Ooh, spicy and they were yelling n-word go home and i was looking around for the n-word because i knew it couldn't be me because i was a queen <laughs> but i'm telling people to quit this mentality of identifying ourselves yeah. by our work to start to live our lives and to redefine the whole concept of how we work and where we work and why we work in the first place. Night
my biggest strength throughout throughout my career has been having incredible mentors and specifically black women. You know, I've been writing poetry since I was like eight. You know, I've been reading Langston Hughes and James Baldwin and Maya Angelou and so forth and so on since I was like a little kid. Like the banjo was blackly black, right? Mm -hmm. For many, many, African. many years, yes. everybody knew. Cause sometimes I'm just doing some Sam because <laughs> I just want to do it. An honor to be here. Thank you for doing the work that you're doing. Keep shining bright. And we and, and like you said, we're going to keep writing black. As always, you can find us on the Grio app or wherever you find your podcasts.